hello and that is right it is time to finally get our hands on the Sabrent PS5 designed heatsink for those of you that have been following this channel for a while you know that we've sort of been touching on SSDs and PS5 for quite a while and Sabrent are the very first brand in the world to produce a heatsink for the internal NVMe to put that into perspective their SSDs that they've been knocking around with for a while, the Rocket series of devices in PCIe Gen 4, those SSDs, they're on the compatibility list for PS5, although there's no official compatibility list, we know they work, but the official update for PS5 to allow those SSDs only got activated like a week and a half ago, not even that. On top of that, the beta was only really announced right at the very end of July. So for Sabrent to not only have um, a heatsink out, but a heatsink out that's designed for the PS5 with that kind of knowledge it was going to be compatible. We have to debate whether they've always known their SSD was going to work or that Sony had already told them they were on the list. But one way or another, whatever way you look at it, them having an SSD heatsink that is specifically designed for the architecture on this system is not to be sniffed at. And in the course of today's video, we're going to look at several things. We're going to have a look at the physical design of it. We're going to compare it against a number of other heat sinks in terms of what they say they can do. Um, I should mention very early dogs in this video that we're only lightly going to touch on temperature stuff. We've already started some provisional testing here in the background and as compares. I say we, it's me and Eddie. Uh, but I've got a full breakdown on that utilising the temperature sensor that's going to be looking at the temperature inside the heatsink with the controller as well as the ambient surrounding environment of the PS5. That's not going to be in this video. I wanted to get this one out as soon as possible for you guys to get a good look at the heatsink because you can't even really buy it at the moment because it's out of stock and only available in pre-order. But very soon in the next day or so I should put out a video where I go through all of the temperature checks comparing it against other heat sinks to see if you re it really is worth the little bit extra that it costs because let's be honest I'll open it up now for good and for bad there are reasons to like and reasons to be less keen on this SSD first and foremost it's worth highlighting as you've probably noticed already it is available in bundles you don't have to just buy the heat sink you can buy the heat sink and a Sabrent SSD bundled together there and again that's a 1TB, a 2TB and even a 4TB model. Now bear in mind of course the SSDs themselves they're not going to be the cheapest of 4 terabytes there at the top but you can if you choose just buy the heatsink on its own. We will use this SSD during our testing but for now this is our primary focus. They've even kind of fair play to them they've even got the design packaging out ready as well. So first thing we want to do is get it out of the box, of course. Uh, this retails, if it's not already on screen, for about $20. Again, that price will fluctuate wherever you are in the world, and some regions haven't even got a price up for this yet. So again, it knocks around for about 18 to £20, uh, pounds slash dollars, and again, other regions just apply it accordingly. So again, actually, before we open it up, again, we should see... On the back there, there's lots of information about how it works and what it's supposed to do there. If we open it up, you can see it does already arrive in a preset case, which is quite nice. I like the fact that I've at least gone to the trouble of putting it in something where it fits. Uh, we have one thermal pad there. We've got the thermal pad. We have a screwdriver there as well for installing uh, the uh, device into your PS5. And of course, we have the heat sink. Now, Everywhere I've seen on the, uh, this online till now, there's been almost no showing of the back. I don't know why, because to be perfectly honest, I'm quite happy with it. Let's get that closer to the mic. That is a sturdy piece of metal there. Again, it's around about, it's quite deep there as we can see. I'm going to be very interested to see how well this fits. I'm going to be trying out both a 2TB and a 4TB drive. In theory, they should still fit absolutely fine inside the PS5. Um, on the top, you've got those kind of air grooves there built into it that apparently, according to, um, to Brent, say that that assists the airflow. So that means when this is covering your SSD, not only does it fill the whole cavity inside the PS5, but with the negative pressure pulling air through the system and out the ventilation fans out the rear, the idea is that the air will pass through those grooves there and therefore assist in keeping the temperature of this heat sink even lower. Again, during our testing, we will be um, making sure that the temperature sensors, this is a two-node sensor for that next video that we're going to be covering. One sensor will be on the controller chip of the SSD. The other one will be outside 
of that cavity bay. If we open up another box here, we can have a look. This has got uh, a Sabrent SSD inside. This is the 4TB model. And if we have a look, you can see that it's already quite a chunky SSD. So I'm going to be looking forward to seeing just how well that is going to fit inside that cavity there. In theory, two-sided SSD should still not be a problem because of the way they're raised with the key at the back. Do bear in mind, I mentioned this in my top 10 FAQ video, um, with a double-sided SSD, the base of the SSD, the bottom, heat, although heat dissipation should be considered, it's not as important as the top because the top has that controller, the most important part. In my previous uh, temperature sensing videos, when I covered that, I didn't, I put the temperature sensor on the NAND, but in this next test we will concentrate on the controller because that is the device that has to maintain the lowest temperature. On the base, you've got nothing but NAND chips there, which like to be a bit warm. So again, a double-sided SSD is to be fine for the heat dissipation underneath. Now, what we'll do, now we've got a look at the thing. Again, we'll do one last look there. It's worth highlighting you don't get an additional screw. You will be reusing that screw that your PS5 arrives with. So if you've lost that screw or you've teared up the threads on it, this is not going to arrive with another screw on the top there. So bear that in mind. It's a small detail, but I imagine some of you who may have already ruined that screw, I'm amazed I haven't, to be honest, um, might want to know that. So let's get our PS5 out of the casing. Let's have a look there. Get that off. Lid gone. There is the inside of our PS5. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera over to the side so you can get a closer look at what we're doing. Right, so I've moved the camera angle down to here. Before we move this panel, it's worth highlighting once again the importance of the cooling system on the PS5. So what happens is when the system is in operation and that top cover is on, air is being drawn around this area. It's being drawn over and then out these ventilation panels out the rear. The air is passed through it and over at the top. Now, with this panel, the reason this exists, according to Sony, is that by having that panel on there, it creates, it maintains the negative pressure through this system, okay? And when we've looked at other heat sinks in the past, if I remove this panel here, you'll be able to see that inside is that allocated bay for the SSD. There we go. And that's where the SSD lives. Now, Till now, um, I've been highly recommending, and I will continue to do so, heat sinks like this one. This is the Elu Tang. This is probably one of my favorite heat sinks on the market. And if you want one so you can keep that lid on there, you would place the SSD inside. You would then install that heat sink there. There isn't an SSD there, but pretend there is. And then this panel here comfortably fits on top of there. And therefore, you can maintain that airflow throughout the device. However, a lot of people like to have slightly beefier heat sinks. And again, these heat sinks have been originally designed for PC utilization, big open chassis with lots of airflow going through them. And the idea of having a heat sink in a contained environment like that stops that active airflow. So a lot of people, rather than going for a heat sink like this, will opt for a much larger heat sink. Now, this is Sabrent's own gamer heat sink. It's a big big old heat sink there. Now this one, if you install that in there, and again, I'm just chucking it in there, but that heat sink, as you can see, brings up the volume height of that heat sink quite significantly. And the result is, you get your panel, it couldn't possibly fit on there. And the result's gonna be that there's a, a kind of contention really about how good or bad that is for the system. Because on the one hand, the air that's going to be passing through it is going to be passing over that heat sink. It's no longer contained. But at the same time, with that air passing over it, you've now created the tiniest bump there, which may affect the airflow through that vent there. So there's a school of this arguments either side whether that is a good or a bad thing, which again is why we're talking about this heat sink. Because the idea is that this one fits on there like so. Let's get that on there properly, not just lob it on. Put that there. And there is our heat sink. It goes inside, it fits, it doesn't block the airflow, and the SSD inside is amply covered. Now again, we're gonna test out 
a 2TB and a 4TB for physical space inside here in a moment. But one thing I will highlight early doors is that this heatsink supports all the way up to 22110 length SSD. To, put, to let you know what that means, the majority of modern SSDs arrive in this length. This length is known as 2280, okay? You see that there? Now, the result is that, that you will get a kind of a limit on capacity. We are starting to see Sabrent as well producing 8TB versions of the Sabrent at the moment have brought out one of the first 8TB 3D TLC 2280 length SSDs I've seen. But as time wears on, to get bigger capacity, these SSDs are going to get longer. Now, Sony have clearly provisioned for this because they include a screw that allows you to install those longer SSDs as they become available in the market in the next few years. Now, there are ways around that with other kinds of NAND to get bigger capacity, but to get the best performing NAND, eventually they're going to have to just make these SSDs longer. And having a heat sink down the line that's going to be able to cover the longer SSDs is certainly a bonus. But for now, let's get down to brass tacks. Let's install an SSD inside here. So, we remove that from there. Get that screw out. So the first thing we want to do is get our SSD. So the first SSD we're going to go for is the 2TB model. We're going for the 2TB. It's only single, um, let's go for it there. Let's have a look. Pop that there, pop the screw inside. I know this is boring to watch, but surely you'd like to know that I'm doing it. Um, let's go inside there and screw it in. So, there is our SSD inside. The next, we want to apply our thermal pad. So, there's our thermal pad. Make sure you're going to cover the heatsink. I'm oh, sorry, the controller there at the top. There is our thermal pad applied. I'm going to stop putting the PlayStation in front of the mic. And finally, of course, is our heatsink. Let's get a closer look at that. First time we've had a proper close look at that. Bring that in there. It slots into the groove. It goes in sweet as a nut. And there we go. There's our heatsink all installed. It's ever so slightly raised, I would say that. It's raised in a quite an, a clear way that works alongside these grooves you see here. So I'm not sure how well I'm going to get this angle, but where the grooves come down is actually flush with the system. Where those grooves, those embossed grooves in the metal go down, they're flush with the main um, PS5 chassis and those raised areas are clearly there to pick up the air as it passes through there. There's a diagram on Sir Brent's own website. They kind of show this off there. And again, we will go into a lot more detail in the next video where we go through uh, temperature sensors uh, checks with that. But for now, let's go for that massive drive. Let's go for the 4TB, that big old chunky SSD, and see if we're still flush or is there any bump at all inside this chassis? Um, underneath the uh, Sabrent heatsink there. I should mention I've gone, I've taken a lot more photos in the link in the description over to NAS Compare, so I recommend you check that out. Let's get that there. Let's grab our 4TB drive. It's the four, the big fat chunky four. Put that in there, grab our screw. So many screws, so little time. Pop that there. In. It's worth actually discussing while I'm doing this about the cost of SSDs for those of um, SSD heatsinks. For those that are looking to buy a heatsink, you're probably looking around at most of them, and they knock around the cheap ones. Uh, you can get pretty poor ones for about five dollars to eight, and there's good mid-range ones. Again, as I mentioned about the Elating, these knock around for about ten to fifteen dollars. So again, you are spending depending on where you're looking around five to ten quid on uh, this heatsink here but i would say as it stands let's get that thermal pad on as well as it stands i think right now it's worth the money based on its physical characteristics obviously 
our performance testing will have to be the end of it and I will go into a little bit more detail um, at the end of the video about the tests I've got planned and then perhaps some of those will be on screen because they are ongoing but there you go the 4TB goes in like an absolute charm no jump no gap absolutely fine no blocked airflow whatsoever so for me that's pretty sweet so let's make our way back over to the other camera and talk a little bit about what we've seen today and what we've got planned for this so as you saw the heat sink does cover that whole bay it does allow air to pass over it in a way that quite frankly the larger ssds like heat sinks from their sabrent themselves just aren't capable of now whether this does serve as a viable alternative to utilizing the plate and a more micro heat sink like the yellow tank we will be going into a lot more detail on the next video we will be looking at how it with uh, with game utilization how things control the temperature internally we're going to do some heavy write some heavy read and in every operation we're going to monitor two things as you can see we're going to be looking at one the internal temperature of the ssd's controller we've got that there tucked underneath the thermal pad and underneath the heatsink right on top of the controller. And then we're also going to be looking at the temperature as it passes through here. We've got a second node here that's going to be capturing the temperature to on the system when it's in operation during heavy write and heavy read. We're going to move about 350 gig of data to and from the SSD. And we're also going to be replicating the exact same test as best we can utilizing that Elateng heatsink. The same SSD, but utilizing the Elateng. Now, of course, there's going to be variables, ambient temperature and more, but we're going to do our best thing. Uh, we're going to do the best we can to maintain those temperatures as much as we can in that ecosystem so we can have something to compare on there in the other video but with regard to the design of this i can't fault it you've seen what sabrent have done there they've looked at the market they've seen an opening and they've gone for it arguably i'm very surprised brands like seagate and wd who already have a significant body of hardware dedicated to gamers didn't beat them to the punch i'm really impressed by sabrent getting there first I like the fact that you can get it in bundles. I think a lot of people will take advantage of those bundles. I like the fact that it supports up to 22110 link. That's very future-proof there. I like that it supports double-sided SSDs. I think, again, fair play to Sprint. They've made a product here that works and isn't just a metal slab there. It does have those grooves and it is noticeably thicker than this and indeed in height is identical to that of the Elateng. They've just done it in a much different fashion. Is it perfect? No. I think a number of people are still slightly on the fence and will likely wait for a temperature video to know that that extra spend, albeit 5 to 10 nicker, which once you're looking at populating this device, is nothing really. Um, and secondly, the bundles, I don't know if you noticed, but when this SSD arrives, I'm sorry, the heatsink arrives with an inclusive SSD, the heat sink and the bundle, uh, the heat sink and the SSD are just together there. Unlike some heat sinks that you buy from a manufacturer in a bundle with the SSD, this doesn't arrive pre-applied. I've reached out to Sabrent and they've said that the thermal padding in future releases will already be pre-applied, but that's really the only difference. It's still going to be a case of manually having to put the SSD inside. It's not really a big deal because it's not a closed bracket, which I think some people may like the idea of a closed two-piece system which isn't present here but i think in the grand scheme of things these are small complaints and for what they've created and what gamers are looking for with um, ssds going inside these systems i can't fault it but again my complete complete final verdict will not come through until i've done temperature sense uh, test on this which is going to take me a few days so do stay tuned for that but if you want to learn more the hardware review for this heatsink is below and I'll be adding lots more details to that as I go through my testing it's linked at NAS compares so do learn more you can get a hold of this there should be a link in the description to this and of course if you do want to learn more click like it helps me understand what you guys like to make more videos like this but click subscribe and the bell to be notified for future videos as they come up and of course if you're still unsure about the SSD you want to buy for your PS5 there's guides down there that I've made uh, listing the full compatibility list so far along with recommended SSDs and of course the free advice section and NAS compares but for now I am going to get the cover back on this bad boy and I'm going to get my testing underway see you next time